friends and welcome to another episode of the Urban Homestanding channel, Wednesday Quickie Edition. If today is the first time you are visiting with us, we want to extend to you a very warm welcome and invite you to view any of our over 500 videos and range for your convenience in playlists as we are certain you are going to find something both entertaining and useful to watch. If you have been here before but you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Do subscribe! If today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very happy birthday! So today we have another first look and a little bit of uh, use information for you guys on what I consider to be a very useful device for your home or office and that is a weather station. Both in Kansas and here uh, a lot of our filming or even our project planning had to be built around the weather. There were times in Kansas that the weather was just too cold for us to build even in our enclosed garage right? And there are times that here it's too hot of course in Kansas as well was too hot, in Kansas we had both, right? So it is nice to know the weather and of course the weather that people give you on, on TV is not always the weather in your location and with us even more so because we live in a forest now so our temperatures are quite different than what they re report at the local airport. And anything can put a damper in you know your project plans. So you could have a downpour without any warning you know, sudden thunderstorms that set off, you know, um, you know, warnings to shelter in place, those kinds of things. And the basic, I have several barometers around the house, but in addition to that, we have a, a lacrosse technologies um, weather station that provides us both internal and external weather information. So, so here it is, and as you can see, it gives us. Uh, a lot of information, give us the time and the date of course and here you're going to see rotating indoor and outdoor temperatures, this is the outdoor temperature and humidity and in a moment it's going to switch to the indoor temperature and humidity it gives us the heat index, feels like it shows wind activity right now with the top wind speeds and it also gives us the wind direction in addition to the wind trend it tells us now that the wind is increasing see that little arrow here going up so there is a lot of nice information that this uh, station provides for us. Now uh, the, the device is very well constructed, it's very intuitive, you simply plug it in and it starts working. It doesn't need any extensive pairing and we're going to go outside in a few moments and we'll show you the external sensor device. But it doesn't need any pairing at all in fact, I just set it up, put the... the I didn't even put batteries because the external device is actually uh, solar, solarly powered. So, so far I've used it for what, two weeks? One week? Yeah, we've had it in place for a couple of weeks, I think. We don't uh, seem to have any, any problems with this, it's working very well. I do like the color scheme, I do like the different colors. It is very pleasant and it fits well into my office, don't you think? Yeah, it sure does. And you know, it's really handy to have, you know, something like this if you are, don't have access to the news or, you, you know, like uh, you said, the, the news isn't always accurate exactly where you are. It was almost dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got a fly so, in front of you. <laughs> so here we are outside. <laughs> this is not the gardening channel. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Here we are outside and we want to show you where we've installed our uh, exterior sensor. As you can see the helicopter looking thing is the our exterior sensor and it's far enough from the house. We're going to get closer in a moment and we're going to talk about what it does and how we chose the location. So stick around friends. You know, 
what's interesting is that we can hear the wind up in the treetops. Oh yeah, you should see well, Yeah, pan up. Oh, now it's actually moving a little faster. Oh, there you go. Get the helicopter again. There we go. We finally got a breeze. But we need to lift it up. I think I need to find a way to put it higher than where it is. You know, I thought it would be great, but the trees prevent the, the wind. But then again, this is the wind we actually feel. Can so. get it above the trees? <laughs> I don't think we're going to get it above the trees. I'm going to get a big pole from Lowe's and stick it on the pole. That won't fit in my truck. So, let's show them a, a close-up. This device, of course, the, the little cups measure the, the wind uh, speed, and this little arrow-looking thing uh, gets the direction of the wind. Is it visible? It is a solar-powered device, you can see on top. So. It doesn't need batteries. And we chose this location because we have this uh, relatively high pole. It's probably, what, six and a half feet? Yeah. And I'm considering changing it. Look again there. Do you see the trees moving? So initially, and what you need to consider is you don't want it next to your house because your house, of course, will prevent wind and other, even will change temperatures. You don't want it in, in a cellar area is the key here, right? You want it somewhere unencumbered. I thought this would be uh, reasonably good, but again, as we saw you, there is plenty of wind. And look there, up, up above the house. You can see the things moving, right? Yeah. So there is much more wind that this records, but because we're among really tall, trees we just don't get the sense of this wind movement so I might have to change it find another location I don't know what location I have a, a handheld anemometer so I might go around and, and test locations I'll be filming that <laughs> what's so exciting about an anemometer that's handheld? No, I just want to see you do it oh come on <laughs> The apprentice suggested I put it on top of my so shop. So we also have, you know, another indicator of the wind speed is the wind chime. Very technical. We have it here, but it hasn't rung since we, <laughs> since we hung it up. It's not without manual manipulation. <laughs> and even though it is wireless, technically, okay. it gives us no information inside the house. <laughs> Where this helicopter looking thing uh, provides Why a lot of information. Like a helicopter? I have no idea. That's how they designed it. I mean... It's very cute. Well, I wouldn't say cute, but... It is. It's cute. It is cute. So... And that's part of the criteria for it, right? Cute. It's funny that you can hear the wind. Mm -hmm. Well... But you can... Uh, that is stopped now. You hear the leaves moving. Right, so... Again, the location is critical. It looks like this is not the best location for our unit. I'll have to figure out a, a, a better location. I think that's the fastest it's moved since we've had it. No, I don't know. It has recorded eight miles per hour wind, so no. This doesn't feel like eight full. It doesn't feel like eight miles per hour. But you can hear the wind. It's interesting, right? I, I would expect this to be more, much more. But again, this is not the device, guys. This is me not picking the best place. And really, the best place will be hard because the true wind that the trees feel would be above the trees. And that's not re reasonable. I don't think these wizards will let me put a hundred foot pole to get above the trees. You'd be better I'd like to see that. You want me to put a hundred foot tall? Climb the tree and put it up in one. I want to see that. <laughs> but most of you don't live in a forest like we do. So using an area that is unencumbered, that uh, you can sense the wind and it is not uh, in direct sun and it's not in direct uh, effect of the weather will give you the best information. The temperature has to be quite accurate and it, it updates very, very frequently as you saw inside. You saw the switch between the two. Every time it updates, it switches, so it does a very good job. And in the two weeks that I have it used, the, the solar has worked great, even though this area does not see direct sunlight, but probably five minutes in a day. Again, nothing sees direct sunlight because we're in a forest, right? Right. But it is plenty to power this device and, and give us good information. Another component of the system is this rain uh, gauge. 
that uh, measures rainfall in a, in a specific location. Again, you want to put it somewhere that it does not affect the rain that it falls on it. So you don't want it under the eave of your house or if you have a covered porch or anything. Uh, it has some really neat things. This is not uh, operated by sunlight that needs batteries. So that might be the only negative. Uh, but the other good thing is that it tells you it, it is self-emptying. So you don't have to do anything. It is maintenance free other than the batteries. What? I thought you had a question. And uh, it pairs wirelessly with the device, so that gives you pretty much all the information you might need for your little ecosystem, right? It will give you the wind, it will give you direction, it will give you temperature, it will give you humidity, and it will give you a, a heat index or a wind shield in the in the winter. Mm -hmm. Both indoor and outdoor. Well, it doesn't. There is no heat index for no, indoor. No, but, but yeah. it gives you indoor and outdoor information. Right? Yeah, it provides. If you have heat index indoors, though, you're in trouble. Your house, is, your house is on fire. Well, you never know. <laughs> it will tell you if you're on fire, I guess, right? So, how do you decide what kind of system, how many different things you need when you're buying one? Well, first of all, you decide how much money you want to spend. This is a, a what it would be considered a fairly entry-level system. It is in the sub-$40 range depending where you find it, if you find it on sale, but it is not a very expensive system. You can spend up to a few thousand dollars on a similar system. The idea is that you get indoor and outdoor temperature, you get wind and you get rain. And, and that's what we, we want and that's what this provides. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, our deciding factors in, in, in this case. I don't know if what else, I cannot think of anything else that you might need. I think that's pretty much it, right? Mm -hmm. So this doesn't give you any kind of like weather warnings, does it? No, but there are systems that do. There are systems that actually connect to your Wi-Fi and they will collaborate with the weather system, the, the national weather system, and it will give you warnings. It will play the national weather alert system mm -hmm. and, and will display in your display, right? And also if you're really into the hobby, uh, there are more advanced systems still that will be station collecting information, which actually feed the information. They read it and through the internet they send it to meteorologists to help them devise more uh, precise forecasts. So it, it can be very extensive if you're into weather. You can really get into it, but a, a very good way without spending a lot of money to get into it is something like this. And Lacrosse Technology has made for many years projects in our old house, I have probably 10 lacrosse uh, indoor-outdoor thermometers because I was mon mon monitoring the temperature inside and outside the house, in big front and back in the house because in Kansas there was different weather actually <laughs> in the front and the back of the house. And because you're a weather geek. I'm a little bit of a weather geek, you know. And also the temperature in the, in the garage where was our shop to decide if we could work there or not. And, and again, a lot of what we want the weather for is to see if we can build an outdoor project, if, if the weather is going to be an impediment or not to us. Or, because we're in North Carolina, whether to go to the beach, or whether to go to the mountains, or, or should we build a project? stay home and do a project. So, this is our uh, longest review of the system. And we hope you did enjoy this episode of the Urban Home Studying Channel. And if you did, we ask you your support by subscribing, giving us a thumb up. And it would be fantastic if you, if you leave us a comment, tell us if you like this video, if you would like videos like that in the future, and what else you might like in the future. So from, from Dr. Wizard, Miss Wizard, Elpida, and the Urban Home Studying Channel, I want to wish you a great week. Stay well, wash your hands, wear your mask, so we can see you again on the weekend. Farewell, friends.